A.3.2. Are there different types of social anarchism? Yes, social anarchism has four major trends. Mutualism, collectivism, communism, and syndicalism. The differences are not great and simply involve differences in strategy. The one major difference that does exist is between mutualism and the other kinds of social anarchism. Mutualism is based around a form of market socialism, workers' cooperatives exchanging the product of their labor via a system of community banks. This mutual bank network would be, open quote, formed by the whole community, not for the special advantage of any individual or class, but for the benefit of all, with no interest exacted on loans except enough to cover risks and expenses, end quote. Such a system would end capitalist exploitation and oppression, for by, open quote, introducing mutualism into exchange and credit, we introduce it everywhere, and labor will assume a new aspect and become truly democratic, end quote. The social anarchist version of mutualism differs from the individualist form by having the mutual banks owned by the local community, or commune, instead of being independent cooperatives. This would ensure that they provided investment funds to cooperatives rather than to capitalistic enterprises. Another difference is that some social anarchist mutualists support the creation of what Proudhon termed an agro-industrial federation to complement the Federation of Libertarian Communities, called Communes by Proudhon. This is a, open quote, confederation intended to provide reciprocal security in commerce and industry, and large-scale developments such as roads, railways, and so on. The purpose of specific federal arrangements is to protect the citizens of the federated states from capitalist and financial feudalism, both with them and from the outside. This is because political right requires to be buttressed by economic right. Thus, the agro-industrial federation would be required to ensure the anarchist nature of society from the destabilizing effects of market exchanges, which can generate increasing inequalities in wealth and so power. Such a system would be a practical example of solidarity, as industries are sisters, they are parts of the same body one cannot suffer without the others sharing in its suffering. They should, therefore, federate, not to be absorbed and confused together, but in order to guarantee mutually the conditions of common prosperity. Making such an agreement will not detract from their liberty, it will simply give their liberty more security and force." End quote. The other forms of social anarchism do not share the mutualists' support for markets, even non-capitalist ones. Instead, they think that freedom is best served by communalizing production and sharing information and products freely between cooperatives. In other words, the other forms of social anarchism are based upon common or social ownership by federations of producers' associations and communes, rather than mutualism's system of individual cooperatives. In Bakunin's words, the open quote, future social organization must be made solely from the bottom upwards, by the free association or federation of workers, firstly in their unions, then in the communes, regions, nations, and finally, in a great federation, international and universal, and the land, the instruments of work, and all other capital may become the collective property of the whole of society and be utilized only by the workers, in other words, by the agricultural and industrial associations, end quote. Only by extending the principle of cooperation beyond individual workplaces can individual liberty be maximized and protected. See section I.1.3 for why most anarchists are opposed to markets. In this, they share some ground with Proudhon, as can be seen. The industrial confederations would, open quote, guarantee the mutual use of the tools of production which are the property of each of these groups and which will, by a reciprocal contract, become the collective property of the whole federation. In this way, the federation of groups will be able to regulate the rate of production to meet the fluctuating needs of society." End quote. These anarchists share the mutualist support for workers' self-management of production within cooperatives, but see confederations of these associations as being the focal point for expressing mutual aid, not a market. Workplace autonomy and self-management would be the basis of any federation for, open quote, 
The workers in the various factories have not the slightest intention of handing over their hard-won control of the tools of production to a superior power calling itself the corporation, end quote. In addition to this industry-wide federation, there would also be cross-industry and community confederations to look after tasks which are not within the exclusive jurisdiction or capacity of any particular industrial federation or are of a social nature. Again, this has similarities to Proudhon's mutualist ideas. Social anarchists share a firm commitment to common ownership of the means of production, excluding those used purely by individuals, and reject the individualist idea that these can be sold off by those who use them. The reason, as noted earlier, is because if this could be done, capitalism and statism could regain a foothold in the free society. In addition, other social anarchists do not agree with the mutualist idea that capitalism can be reformed into libertarian socialism by introducing mutual banking. For them, capitalism can only be replaced by a free society by social revolution. The major difference between collectivists and communists is over the question of money after a revolution. Anarcho-communists consider the abolition of money to be essential, while anarcho-collectivists consider the end of private ownership of the means of production to be the key. As Kropotkin noted, collectivist anarchism, open quote, expresses a state of things in which all necessaries for production are owned in common by the labor groups and the free communes, while the ways of retribution, i.e. distribution of labor, communist or otherwise, would be settled by each group for itself, end quote. Thus, while communism and collectivism both organize production in common via producers' associations, they differ in how the goods produced will be distributed. Communism is based on free consumption of all, while collectivism is more likely to be based on the distribution of goods according to the labor contributed. However, most anarcho-collectivists think that, over time, as productivity increases and the sense of community becomes stronger, money will disappear. Both agree that, in the end, society would be run along the lines suggested by the communist maxim, open quote, from each according to their abilities, to each according to their needs, end quote. They just disagree on how quickly this will come about. See section I.2.2. For anarcho-communists, they think that, open quote, communism, at least partial, has more chances of being established than collectivism, end quote, after a revolution. They think that moves towards communism are essential as collectivism, open quote, begins by abolishing private ownership of the means of production and immediately reverses itself by returning to the system of remuneration according to work performed, which means the reintroduction of inequality, end quote. The quicker the move to communism, the less chances of new inequalities developing. Needless to say, these positions are not that different, and, in practice, the necessities of a social revolution and the level of political awareness of those introducing anarchism will determine which system will be applied in each area. Syndicalism is the other major form of social anarchism. Anarcho-syndicalists, like other syndicalists, want to create an industrial union movement based on anarchist ideas. Therefore, they advocate decentralized, federated unions that used direct action to get reforms under capitalism until they are strong enough to overthrow it. In many ways, anarcho-syndicalism can be considered as a new version of collectivist anarchism, which also stressed the importance of anarchists working within the labor movement and creating unions which prefigure the future free society. Thus, even under capitalism, anarcho-syndicalists seek to create free associations of free producers. They think that these associations would serve as a practical school of anarchism, and they take very seriously Bakunin's remark that the workers' organizations must create not only the ideas, but also the facts of the future itself in the pre-revolutionary period. Anarcho-syndicalists, like all social anarchists, open quote, 
are convinced that a socialist economic order cannot be created by the decrees and statutes of a government, but only by the solidaric collaboration of the workers with hand and brain in each special branch of production, that is, through the taking over of the management of all plants by the producers themselves under such form that the separate groups, plants, and branches of industry are independent members of the general economic organism and systematically carry on production and the distribution of the products in the interest of the community on the basis of free mutual agreements. End quote. Again, like all social anarchists, anarcho syndicalists see the collective struggle and organization implied in unions as the school for anarchism. As Eugene Varlin, an anarchist active in the First International who was murdered at the end of the Paris Commune, put it, unions have, open quote, the enormous advantage of making people accustomed to group life and thus preparing them for a more extended social organization. They accustom people not only to get along with one another and to understand one another, but also to organize themselves to discuss and to reason from a collective perspective. Moreover, as well as mitigating capitalist exploitation and oppression in the here and now, the unions also form the natural elements of the social edifice of the future. It is they who can be easily transformed into producers' associations. It is they who can make the social ingredients and the organization of production work." End quote. The difference between syndicalists and other revolutionary social anarchists is slight and purely revolves around the question of anarcho-syndicalist unions. Collectivist anarchists agree that building libertarian unions is important and that work within the labor movement is essential in order to ensure, open quote, the development and organization of the social and by consequence anti-political power of the working masses, end quote. Communist anarchists usually also acknowledge the importance of working in the labor movement, but they generally think that syndicalist organizations will be created by workers in struggle, and so consider encouraging the spirit of revolt as more important than creating syndicalist unions and hoping workers will join them. Of course, anarcho-syndicalists support such autonomous struggle and organization, so the differences are not great. Communist anarchists also do not place as great an emphasis on the workplace, considering struggles within it to be equal in importance to other struggles against hierarchy and domination outside the workplace. Most anarcho-syndicalists would agree with this, however, and often it is just a question of emphasis. A few communist anarchists reject the labor movement as hopelessly reformist in nature and so refuse to work within it, but these are a small minority. Both communist and collectivist anarchists recognize the need for anarchists to unite together in purely anarchist organizations. They think it is essential that anarchists work together as anarchists to clarify and spread their ideas to others. Syndicalists often deny the importance of anarchist groups and federations, arguing that revolutionary industrial and community unions are enough in themselves. Syndicalists think that the anarchist and union movements can be fused into one, but most other anarchists disagree. Non-syndicalists point out the reformist nature of unionism and urge that to keep syndicalist unions revolutionary, anarchists must work within them as part of an anarchist group or federation. Most non-syndicalists consider the fusion of anarchism and unionism a source of potential confusion that would result in the two movements failing to do their respective work correctly. For more details on anarcho-syndicalism, see section J.3.8 and section J.3.9 on why many anarchists reject aspects of it. It should be stressed that non-syndicalist anarchists do not reject the need for collective struggle and organization by workers. See section H.2.8 on that particular Marxist myth. In practice, few anarcho-syndicalists totally reject the need for an anarchist federation, while few anarchists are totally anti-syndicalist. For example, Bakunin inspired both anarcho-communist and anarcho-syndicalist ideas, and anarcho-communists like Kropotkin, Malatesta, Bergman, and Goldman were all sympathetic to anarcho-syndicalist movements and ideas. For further reading on the various types of social anarchism, we would recommend the following. 
Mutualism is usually associated with the works of Proudhon, collectivism with Bakunin's, communism with Kropotkin's, Malatesta's, Goldman's, and Berkman's. Syndicalism is somewhat different, as it was far more the product of workers in struggle than the work of a famous name. Although this does not stop academics calling George Sorrell the father of syndicalism, even though he wrote about a syndicalist movement that already existed. The idea that working class people can develop their own ideas by themselves is usually lost on them. However, Rudolf Rocker is often considered a leading anarcho-syndicalist theorist, and the works of Fernand Pelloutier and Émile Pouget are essential reading to understand anarcho-syndicalism. For an overview of the development of social anarchism and key works by its leading lights, Daniel Guérin's excellent anthology No Gods, No Masters cannot be bettered.